we, we know and we've seen that, that uh, OTT is going to be very effective at grabbing the initial 10 to 15 percent of the, you know, the mass market for 4K Ultra HD. We've seen that with Netflix in 2015 and how you know, consumers are jumping onto the bandwagon. However, we, we also um, we, we believe that, that the real way to, to you know, reach the 30 percent and, and maintain subscribers is it has been and will remain uh, with premium li uh, you know, live events. And live sport is a good example. Uh, which, you know, this is the really the key to, to keeping your subscribers and uh, growing beyond that initial 10-15%. It's true that uh, if you look at OTT, it's really about VOD and movies, and you will see very little activity uh, related to live, and that's because there are severe challenges for uh, delivery of live events, or let's say 4K Ultra HD live events over OTT. And uh, there's two aspects. The first is achieving the, the 4K Ultra HD quality, and the second one is dealing with you know subscriber growth and scaling. Uh, the first issue is you know if you look across the globe, getting 20 to 30 megabits uh, into the home for OTT, it's achievable in some places, but certainly you know not in the majority of areas. So that's your number one challenge because with the compression rates today, uh, you know it's generally accepted that 20 to 30 is you know, megabits is what it's going to take to to deliver you know competitive ultra HD services. We know today that the 15 megabits is well received from Netflix, but as the you know the technology rolls out and the new TVs come into the market and it becomes competitive, uh, we're looking at what seems to be 20 to 30 megabits for a quality service. In addition, the savings for HEVC uh, for movies and VOD are around the uh, estimated to be around the 50 percent. For live, because of the just-in-time aspect, it's less, it's 30 percent. So it's harder to you know, achieve the compression. So that's the one issue. The second um, real issue that an OTT provider had I has with, um, with a live service is that you know, the more subscribers you get, the more you pay. Um, because to maintain that sustained quality of you know, anywhere from 15 to 30 megabits per second, You've got to either have a proprietary uh, uh, network, dedicated network, or a massive CDN presence across the region, you know, lots of pops, as they call it, uh, to enable you to you know, get the content to the edge. In addition to this, if we look at live events, there's a real problem because, first of all, a typical characteristic of live events is that all the, the watches come online at the same time which for OTT is, is, a, is a serious issue in terms of scaling and has a massive cost impact. And the consumer tolerance for delays and artifacts in live events is critical. You know, you can't afford to miss a goal or be behind, uh, you know, in, in reality quizzes and things like this and, and live sport events. You can recognize that Certainly, at the current time, there's definitely a, a window of opportunity for, for, you know, satellite broadcasters with premium services, as an example, with live sport. Broadcast advantages for delivering live 4K events. Broadcasters have, if, if we look at a summary of what the advantage they have is, first of all, it's achieving the quality. They can feasibly create the bandwidth and introduce a 4K service. And sustaining the quality of that service is not an issue. The second one is that scaling comes at no extra cost for a broadcaster. There's no CDNs, there's no uh, uh, network infrastructure, infrastructure uh, um, updates that are needed, which means long-term revenue models are very effective. Rolling out live 4K services on broadcast networks. They have effectively a one-off setup cost to, to introduce a 4K service. And what is that cost? It involves introducing the compression technology, freeing up enough bandwidth on a transponder to introduce the 4K service. However, once that's done, there's no more uh, uh, recurring costs. Um, so how does this, the consumer get access? You know, they have a, a, a gateway set-top box in the home that allows them to get sustained 4K Ultra HD quality at 20 to 30 megabits. And on top of that, the massive advantage they have is that you, you can forward the content at this quality level to all the devices in the home, tablet, mobile, um, 
you know, the resolution might not necessarily need to stay maximum, but certainly the great color and contrast you'll be able to get across onto your tablets. And all of this at no extra cost in terms of uh, um, scaling. So if everyone comes online for a live event, there's no impact on the, on the operator infrastructure. And this, what this means is that these broadcast operators are going to have a very competitive uh, revenue model in terms of costs for the foreseeable future. Trends to watch for 4K service delivery. Both OTT and broadcast operators sh should be keeping an eye on two things. Uh, the first of all is licensing of the compression technology, since that impacts revenue models if you have to give a cut to a, a, you know, a licensed body. And there is talk of that in the market at the moment. Uh, the second one, and it's related to the fact that you know, HEVC licensing is being discussed, is there's disruptive and innovative technology in the form of something like the VNOVA codec, uh, codec, where it's claimed that it can do, you know, what HEVC can do in 20 to 30 megabits, it can be possibly done under 10. This is what the claims are. And that would mean, that would mean two things. One, it would mean that OTT operators could well uh, consider to introduce live events and, and uh, with significant reach into the market. Uh, because it's certainly easier to get 10 megabits into a home or access to 10 megabits as a consumer than 20 or 30. And the second thing is that uh, broadcasters would be able to further or massively uh, free up uh, bandwidth for new services.